Staying Alive UK. Share your story. Hello, Mariana. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Great to have you here. How are you doing today? I'm fine. Thank you. And thank you very much for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, I'm really looking forward to our conversation because your topic and what you're going to be talking about in a bit uh, is is very close to my own heart in terms of uh, the journey that I've been on. So I'm, I'm very interested in that. Um, however, before we get there, please, would you share with our listeners a little bit about your journey? And we'd love to hear where you were born. Uh, where did you go to school? Um, I, I can already detect a tiny bit of an accent. Um, so I know, you know, how did you come to the UK? Because I know you're in the UK. Have you moved around? And then, and then we'll talk about your career and then how you got to what you're doing today. Is that okay with you? Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. Great. Uh, well, I was born in Belgrade, Serbia now. It used to be Yugoslavia. Yeah. Uh, and I would never guess that one day I would <laughs> be in UK. Uh, but, you know, life happens. I was an economist and I worked in the bank for 10 years. And I wasn't happy at all. Working there was nice regarding money. Yes. And nothing else was nice <laughs> because, mm -hmm. you know, all my life, actually, I wanted to study psychology and help people and do work that I'm doing right now. But as a young girl, I wanted to do what my parents wanted me, trusting them that they know better. So I yes. tried. I did all that work. And then to find out one day that, oops, I don't like it. I can't do that anymore. <laughs> And luckily, actually, the whole thing of coming here helped me. And mm -hmm. what brought me here is actually war. I was in war for about three months. Right. It was really bad. And my sister lived here for about six, seven years before the war. And even though she invited me to come and join her because we were very close to come here and be here, I thought, no, 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 I'm too old. I was 40 years old, like, no, you know, I can't do it. Too old, small kids, all of that. Yes. But, you know, how old were, sorry, how old were you when the war was on? Uh, I was 40. Four zero. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Right. And during that time, because, you know, when you have bones above your heads, like five times a day, yes, you're spending, you know, a lot of time under the ground and waiting for the whole thing to stop one day. Mm. I had a lot of time to think. So my decision was, if I survive, I want to go back to the idea that my sister offered me to come here. Mm. Because I just didn't want my kids to see another war because it's quite unstable in Serbia. And I was like, thinking now about that as an opportunity. And that's interesting because, you know, life brings you stuff and then mm. you deal with that. And if you survive, you, you get new skills. Yeah. And actually, that's how I came here in 2000. And when we came, we were doing, you know, whatever, just my husband had a proper job. I didn't. I was doing whatever. Mm. And we had an agreement that when he come to the point that he's got a stable business, then yeah. it will be my opportunity to start mine. Right. That happened in uh, 2010. Right. So, you know, shortly that's how I went from being in the bank, then working whatever here was available. You know, I didn't have many choices that I could work as an economist, which is actually good news now, because I wouldn't do what I'm doing if I had a job as an economist so mm. it's so it's, were you did you study study economy then in school or university yeah university in belgrade right 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 so you when you you did your schooling and everything there and did you learn english at school 
yeah yes yeah yeah um and then studied economy but what was what was the plan becoming an economist and working in a bank and i know you're saying you probably weren't happy but did you have kind of you're going to go to the top in the bank or or no it a... was you know being an economist meant at that time that you have so many diversity options in what you could do and it yes. was about security you know having that kind of degree in my hands i know that i will have enough money to survive you know in socialist country for example you can't just walk away when you don't like something because you would never get a job and i grew up in a socialist country so options are quite limited and yes when i was thinking to be a psychologist my father made jokes about me yeah but you're never going to find a job so what's the point and that's why i listened right and yeah you know wanting to be a good girl a lot of people i work with have the same issue like following what somebody else says because you don't believe your own mind your own heart actually not the mind yes and a lot of work that i'm doing right now is help people to understand what's going on here and then you can find out how not to eat sugar lose weight whatever it's so connected you need to put your soul your mind and your body into one thing understand it in order to one day have results whatever the results are because you know just going just quickly because you just asked me and 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 i i just want to make a comment mm. if you're eating sugar if you have a weight that you don't like it's a symptom yes There's something in your whole system is not working and your body is giving you some information like you need to change something this is not working yes so if you think about any addiction any kind of challenge this way then it's completely different way of understanding how you can change that because it's not about willpower ever no it's no. about having an understanding yourself yeah and then you can step by step change things mm. okay We'll come, we'll come on to yeah, that. Sorry, I just jumped in because... <laughs> no, no, that's good. It's good to give us a taster <laughs> of what people are going to be hearing later on. So I, I just wanted to ask another question about Serbia and Belgrade and yeah. the war. And how long did you have to live through the war before you decided to leave and come to the UK? Three months. Wow, yeah. And how long did the war actually go on for? That that was the time we couldn't go out while the war was going on. Right. So it was a nightmare. <laughs> well, three months is long enough, isn't it? It's scary enough for three months. Wow. Yeah. I could tell and... you, that, you know, my whole family, when we came here, when you mm. hear the noise of the plane, you just kind of feel like, oh, it's not nice because that's the, the sound we were hearing three to five times a day and having like hundreds of planes coming above Belgrade and then expecting to hear the bombs. Yes. So, you know, it's, it's a kind of quite a lot of stress. Yeah. And, and did you suffer any after effects of stress when you came yeah. to the UK? Yeah, anxiety came big time. Yeah. 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 Well, like post-traumatic stress and, yes. and yeah wow okay so you came to the uk your husband got a job or he was running his own business well, he got the job but after a while he realized how things work here hmm. and then he started his own business and he is now having you know good successful business and i have two sons and they are working three of them together i'm kind of small support you know, with yeah. little things, but basically it's a family business and it's good and successful. And, you know, right now everybody struggles, right? In, in this yes. Corona circumstances, nothing is easy, but it, it does work and it's good. Okay, great. So that, so that stability gave you 
it's an important point to know and and to to learn about especially for our listeners that are looking to start their own business you know you what you did is you waited until there was a stable base uh with your husband's business yes before you then decided right i'm now going to do something myself now i'm really really curious how an economist decides to go in the direction that you went in so <laughs> how did that come about well <laughs> since i was quite young i knew that i have some kind of energy in my hands i was quite like for example somebody would have a headache and i would put my hands on them to help right and then with my kids especially with my younger son i just put my hands where he feels the pain and it would go away so mm. healing and energy work is something that was kind of inside me and also meditation i started meditating when i was 21 right. so those two things were kind of in the background on the whole you know idea with me so i was really feeling that there is something that is more important than you know doing whatever i was doing in the bank and that work was kind of getting more and more interesting and then what happened uh, in 2003 my sister uh, got melanoma which is a type of cancer that has no any kind of treatment whatsoever skin cancer right yes yes yeah and you know if you catch it on time it's not a big deal but if you don't as she didn't then you know chances to survive are very very small mm. and what i started then and i had my own challenges with thyroid and my anxiety and all of that and mm. i started exploring food because she asked me to and she was so close to me you know she w- because she was 6 years younger i was for her you know set sister and mother at the same time you know when you're older it's kind of like all that relationship and she yes. was my best friend at the same time so we spent a lot of time studying nutrition because there was nothing else like you know vegetarian diet vegan uh, it wasn't called vegan then i i, I think uh, no. microbiotics all sort of things and what i started learning then that food is food is really powerful but not in terms of dieting and all of that which you know at that point i was dieting and dieting i just kind of jumped now because my whole thing about food and weight and all of it started actually with my pregnancies i i just missed that so would you like me to tell you a little bit about that why yes, actually yes please yeah i yeah. started this well yeah. i was quite a slim as a young woman hmm. then sorry i got pregnant and sorry about this that's okay what really happened is that i had some miscarriages and uh, the doctor told me if i want to have a baby i need to spend the time in bed no going out people could relate to me probably right now no out for 9 months right and i just didn't know what to do and because eating was allowed nobody told me don't eat or you know you're going to have a problem if you eat a lot yes that was my strategy to survive 9 months with you know waiting for the baby to come and i put five stones wow so i was huge and i thought you know doesn't really matter once when i have my baby i will lose weight i was slim like you know i wouldn't mm. stay big and fat i would mm. and that was a big mistake <laughs> because yes. you know i just couldn't get rid of it i would go mm. on a diet after diet after diet i would lose the weight gain it back and blah 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 sugar addiction torturing myself and i just couldn't find it you know at all mm. Mm. it was really hard and i felt horrible i remember i still remember a good friend of mine told me oh mariana you look like a mountain mm. that was big <laughs> you know it's just it's not nice of them to say though but oh, yeah. imagine i'm remembering now 30 years <laughs> later what he said mm. and especially after being slim and suddenly you are huge 
Yes. So all the shame and blame and, you know, all of those feelings were very, very strong to me. So it took me a long time. And then my sister got cancer. And then I went into food in a different way in terms of healing and how yes. food could heal you, not just how you can, you know, lose weight and eat less and the whole dieting mentality. So I really started to be extremely interested in the power of food. Mm. Because I think we hardly know. Well, you know, we know like you have carbs, fat, protein, but yes. there is a food that you can take that is going to make you feel good. And there are food, foods that are really wrong for you. And that also, it's not the same for you and me. So it's really, really a lot you can learn when you start to go deeper into understanding nutrition and going further. And unfortunately, my sister didn't survive. I'm sorry to hear that. And that was really huge shock. And it felt mm. like, you know, you just feel that something good is happening in this country. We found a way here and we liked it. And then yeah. I lost my sister. And that was really, really hard time. I don't know how I managed to survive. Mm. I know about for about two years, I wasn't here really. No. But the whole thing with food and understanding and then trying to help my family, you know, because with genes, I was thinking, you know, how much my kids would get this type of cancer because it's 50% chances, you know, when you have it, like my sister had it, that any of us could have. So the mistake yeah. that I made, I hardly let my kids go out because, you know, that skin cancer, that's about sun. Yes. So the big mistake, and I think I can see that a lot around, because you have potential problem with the sun, we don't go, go out. And then when you don't have enough vitamin D, your health goes into really, really huge problems. Mm. And that's not good. At that time, I didn't know, I was just scared. But I continue learning because for some reason, you know, when I'm stressed or not feeling so great, I really enjoy studying because then my brain and all of me is into studying so i've done a lot of different things you know i studied nutrition yeah. i yeah. studied uh, studied eft and uh, matrix reprinting meditation was my long-term love i told you about that so i became meditation teacher as well i studied sedona method so I studied yes. different methods that could help people with addictions, with trauma. I wanted to help myself as well. Of course. And also, you know, to pass it uh, to, to other people later on. Basically, cut the story short. My whole struggle with food and trying to lose weight came to the point that I realized that the only way to have sustainable result is to include mind. Yes right? You cannot do it with food. No. And, you know, eating less, exercising more works when you're in your 20s. Mm -hmm. After that, very rarely, and for men a little bit more than for women, because as soon as you have, start having problems with hormones and things start to, to go, you know, after pregnancies and all of that, things are more complicated. Yes. And eating less and exercising more, it's just not working. And there are studies after study after study that you can see that it's not working and people keep doing that. And what I did with all of those studies that I told you and practicing on myself, I found a system that works. Mm -hmm. And that includes, you know, mind, body, nutrition, there are kind of several things that you need to put together in order to work. If you just use food, it's not enough. Mm. If you try to work only with mind, it's not enough again, because if you keep eating sugar and working with your mind, you, you know, it, it's too complicated. Yeah. If you put things and like synergy and then you know, everything just fits in. Yeah. It's completely different story. And Just to tell you one thing that I find really important in terms of my story. Mm. At first, because I, I was overweight, I had problems. I put the whole system and wanted to be a weight loss coach in order to help people to lose weight. And yes. I was working and people knew me as a weight loss coach. 
and I was eating healthy and, you know, thinking that all of that is just fine and thinking about business. But then at some point, I've got cancer. It was my turn. Obviously, it is something in the family because my grandma, my father, my sister had cancer. All of them died from cancer. Mm. I'm grateful that I'm still here. Mm. And after that experience, my feeling is that I'm still here for some reason. And the knowledge and all of that studying that is, you know, quite a long time. It just gives me like, uh, what would be the word? Like, it's my mission Mm. to help people to understand that sugar is really much worse than most people think. Mm -hmm. And it's so bad for your health that I really am on a mission like, let's put it this way. When I was young, a lot of us smoke. Most people smoke. It's not that nobody knows that smoking is not healthy. Yeah. But we really didn't know enough. I think the same thing we are going through right now with sugar. People think, oh, what's the big deal? You know, I'm not eating a lot or whatever. It's just that manufacturers are putting so much sugar in their product to make you addicted because that's what they want. That's, you know, intention to keep you coming back to their product. So they're putting sugar into products that even you have no idea that should contain any sugar because it doesn't taste like it. Yes. And that affects your digestion, your brain, your your heart. And so many people are becoming diabetic. It's not, you know, for no reason. Mm. And really, You know, if you asked me before cancer, I wanted to develop my business because, you know, I like to run the business and help people, all of it. But, you know, developing a business was important part. Mm. After I survived cancer, my main goal is to bring awareness that sugar could be avoided. And I promise you, life is sweeter without sugar. And that's how I call my program. Because first, it's possible. You don't need a willpower And it's really not that complicated when you know how. Mm. So, you know, right now, I'm all about, please, if you are listening now, just think about how much sugar you are taking and think how can you replace it because it is possible. And it's not hard. There's so so many questions coming up in my head. So I'll, I'll give you a pause. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mariana. That's really fascinating how how your journey has evolved around examining you know health issues in yourself and then other people around you etc and i had a not too dissimilar journey as you um because i suffered with ballooning weight issues i still do but it was a lot worse. And I discovered certain things that I was doing at the time. And when I changed my mind and my habits and my conditioning, it all changed. However, because of my years of conditioning, and I think this is perhaps the problem, which I'm researching at the moment, actually, for myself, initially, not about going out and preaching about it, but I just wanted to experience it myself, my conditioned responses and how I've been conditioned when I was a little kid with sugar and how that still keeps showing up for me on a regular basis. Now, my question to you is, you you mentioned something earlier Um, which I think is a really, really important point. And that is, you mentioned willpower. You said, it's not about willpower, right? Yes. Although I think the whole world thinks that it is willpower, you know, because for example, if you were changing your habits or diet and say, right, I'm going to stop eating that, particular piece of food 
because I know it's bad for me, but I really like it. Therefore, I've got to use willpower to, I, I don't, personally, I don't believe that is correct, but I think most of the world thinks this way that says, I've got to be really strong to stop myself from having that. Um, so in your experience, how did you, how did you overcome the fact they said, right, I now know that particular food will not serve me. What was the switch that went out on in your head to stop you then from reaching out? Let me tell you, it's quite simple. That's why I use keto diet mm. as one of the uh, helpers on the journey. Right. And I'll explain how and why that works. So in order to make this healthy eating effortless, you need a little bit, you need willpower for about two weeks because right. at the beginning you have nothing else but willpower, right? Right. And because we are changing the diet at, the, at that time in terms of eating more healthy fat and cutting the carbs down, we are making physiological changes in your body. And at right. that time, at the beginning, you need willpower because you can't see the benefits. You're just suffering because of addiction. Right? Yes, yes. And that switches off really quickly. Really right. quickly. And then your cravings are going down with the systems and tools that I use when I work with people. So it just goes down and down. And the point is, you need to find a way to sit with the feeling that is coming up when you have a craving. Because craving doesn't come from nowhere. Mm. There is always a trigger. It could be something that you just heard. It could be that you've seen something. It could be that you just pa pa passed the bakery and the smells triggered it. But the thing is, and that's why in my business is green mindful keto. Mindfulness is a very important part because you can't understand and recognize triggers without being mindful. Mm. So yes. you need to see like, oh, this is what just, or you feel a craving right now and you just go back like five minutes, 10 minutes back. What really happened? What I was thinking about, what's in front of me to find out what's the trigger. Yeah. Right? You need to, to sit with the trigger and you need to give that emotion to come up, deal with that. Because what we do, when we feel something we don't like, we're just yeah. pushing it down, hoping it will disappear. And actually that comes up when you're tired, weak, in the evening. When do people usually eat sweets? In the evening, right? Mm. One, you're tired. Second, because you're using willpower all day long and mm. something that people don't know about willpower. I think the first study about willpower was done in late 90s, so not long time ago. Mm. The point is you don't have unlimited resource of power. None of us do. So imagine when you wake up in the morning, you have a bucket of fuel power. Each time you use it, there is less. So imagine it's just leaking and leaking. And, and at some point you don't have any more, done. And then you think, oh, yeah. something is wrong with me because I can't go any further. Well, you had, they are saying that there is about 200 triggers a day about food for each one of us when we go out, not now, because you know we are not out a lot, but it's about mm. 200, so 200 times a day, you need to kind of, oh, there we, but I'm not going to, oh, no, no. In the approach that I'm talking about is once when you come to the point that your body feels good without sugar, okay, so you're starting to feel the benefits, physiological benefits, mental benefits, emotional benefits of being without sugar, and then, and that happens for every single person, you come to the party somewhere when there is a lot of sugar and stuff that are kind of like calling you. Yes. And you come and have it. And you know, that's the best part in the journey. I promise you that. Because yeah. when you have a break of anything that is not good for your body, your body responds really badly. Yeah. And that's your benefit. 
because then you're not trying to make yourself from conscious mind that runs like five to 10% of your whole activities, right? Yes. Then you come to the body, body saying, ooh, that was horrible experience. Yeah. Why would I do that again? And that is your anchor for next time mm. not to do it. Obviously, it's not as simple as I'm saying right now. We work on that, but we are having those kind of points. And when you remember how bad it felt, it's not about pushing yourself. It's not about willpower. It is like, you know, when you were little and you touched the stove and it was hot, mm. you don't go there again. That's mm. the type of feeling I'm helping you to develop. So you don't go there because it's not good for you. And basically people who work with me are completely okay to sit around cakes, donuts, biscuits, and they just... No, and you're not because I have a good willpower. No, I don't want that. It doesn't feel good. Mm. You see the difference? Yes. And it doesn't feel good. There is no effort, right? Brilliant. It's a process. And yeah. it takes so time to get there, but it's not hard. You know, maybe the most important part is that at the beginning, you need willpower and it is a work, right? But unlike diets, it gets easier and easier and then effortless completely. Do you see the difference? Yes, I do. And I have experienced it. So exactly as you are describing, I have been through that experience. Wow. And now, however, <laughs> there's a big but, right? So in in noticing so i'm noticing more about what i'm doing whereas before i wasn't aware as much right okay. and just recently i've been studying something called dependent origination which i don't know if you've come across no. Uh, it's a Buddhist teaching and there are 12 cycles in terms of suffering. And one of the cycles is called craving. And craving can be craving for something to happen in your life, craving for something to change in your life, craving foods. Obviously, we're talking about that topic right now. And this, here is where it goes wrong for me. And it happens around Christmas time. Okay, when, when I lived in the Netherlands, there were very tasty Santa class, which you may be familiar with. On the 5th of December, there was certain foods that came out. And then around Christmas time, there were certain foods that came out as well. And then here in the UK, you've got certain foods that come out. And it's almost like you're drawn from your conditioned childhood to have those foods again. And you buy them because they're in the shops and they're thrown at you on TV and in the supermarkets and you crave them. And once you start doing that, say over the Christmas period, and although every Christmas I reduce it somehow, I definitely do. But then after Christmas, you know, when everybody goes on the January diets and things like that, which I don't do anymore, I don't do that kind of, you know, thing. But the conditioned the conditioning or the reintroduction of the sugars and the fats because it's sugar and fat combinations that happen over that Christmas period. They then, you know, start to bring out that conditioned response for a longer period of time going into the new year. And yeah, that's probably where I am right now. Would you like me to make a comment on that? Mm, please. 
you see, I teach people tools to use when that happens, because we are humans. Everybody <laughs> has challenges and times when you do that. So let's say thinking about Christmas time and you go and do and eat things that are not good for you. If you're following the plan that I'm talking about and you work with me and your body learn that this is not healthy for you, you are going to feel that. And if you understand what is behind that, tomorrow when you feel, you know, you, you wake up again and feel, oh, this didn't feel good. Mm. If you know how to deal not to get and bring the guilt up, because that's mm. something that needs to be worked on so you understand, you are getting an information that the way I feel right now, it's the feedback from yesterday. So it didn't feel good. And that, rather than bringing guilt and shame, you mm. have an anchor, but you need to have your mind around it. You need to understand how, right? And when we worked on that and you understand all of those details, it will you know, be too much time for me to explain details. No, no, I understand, I understand. But just ima imagine that you can have an anchor or you can have a shame and blame game. And that makes a huge difference because if you go into blame and shame, tomorrow you're going to go again and be yes. worse. Because if I broke it, then I'm just going to keep going. And the thing is, if you keep going, you go back to addiction. Yes. And it's not different, you know, sugar addiction or heroin addiction, it's the same. They're, I know. They're even saying, there are studies saying that sugar addiction is worse than heroin. Yeah. So you need to go back like alcohol or heroin or anything. You need to go to day one to change that. Yeah. But it's really in that time, it's about having the tools to deal with when it happens because it will happen it happens to me it happens to everybody or i just make a conscious decision right now i feel so good and i might do something even though after all of those years i know i'm going to regret it tomorrow yes because it doesn't feel good but if i do tomorrow i'm back to normal mm. right because I don't do blame and shame because I know what I need to do and how I need to do, deal with that. And it's not a big deal. If yeah. I would keep going or if any of my clients for a week, then there is more work that needs to be done. And honestly, that's the reason that I'm contemplating doing a monthly support session for my old clients or maybe also for people who never worked with me, just to remind them about yes. tools. Because, you know, we learn by repetition. Yes. Just understanding something is far from enough, right? Yeah. You need to practice and practice and practice. And the whole idea is that you have your behavior in your brain. You have connection with the neurons. And the more you do the same thing, the stronger connection is and you build a habit. And then you don't think about it. You just do it. Like when you were learning to drive a car, you had to think about every single thing that you need to do in order to drive and you couldn't concentrate on anything else. Right now, yes, yes. you're driving and you are thinking about God knows what and you're just driving, right? So the thing is, you need to work on any new habit until that becomes your new normal and then you don't think about it, Yeah. right? That's the whole idea. So idea is that... You change that pattern so that your normal is healthy eating. And when you yes. go back to whatever, Christmas party, you are sad or whatever, you have the set of tools that you're going to use the next day. So you yeah. can very quickly go back to healthy eating and it's not a big deal. So there is a way around it. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I'm reflecting back on what you said earlier, which is very, very true, which is the toughest thing to do, I think. Well, it isn't. I'm just making an excuse, I suppose. And that is catching yourself in the moment, having that awareness of what you're doing when you're reaching out and you're taking that, let's call it sugar food, 
and you're realizing that's what you're doing and noticing it, which is that mindfulness, bringing that mindfulness in, even though you might continue with it and eat it or what, you know, consume it. It's having that awareness that that's what you're doing right in that moment, rather than, I mean, I remember seeing programs. I mean, you, you know, they, they have all these programs that come out in January about dieting and everything. And they do, yeah. they usually have these people that they film about the stuff that they eat. And when they're trying to cut down and they go to the burger bar and, and they don't, when they then show them on a table, what they've eaten over the whole week, they don't even remember that they've eaten it. I know. Yes. Which is that kind of conditioned response. Yes. When we don't even notice. And that's why what you're saying, which makes complete sense. I completely buy into it. I'm not saying it's easy, but I buy into it. I understand it. Um, that awareness is, is a massive part in, in changing. You know, what's beautiful about this, when you start doing that about food, you start realizing your behavior in your life. Because it is hard only at the beginning. And the more you develop a habit of understanding when you are lying to yourself, when you are pushing your emotions down, when you're doing things, pretending, you know, not saying the truth, all of those things that you're doing about food start to become your normal behavior. And improvement that you see in your life is huge. It's transformational. I talked to a lady, um, she was my client about six months ago. And she asked me, why do you do this about food? Because you helped me to become a new person. Mm. It really, you should work on, you know, other things, meditation and stuff like that, because that's, that's the thing. And I'm saying, no, it doesn't matter. Food no. is my doorway. And if I don't help you to become who you really are, you're not going to stay on this. So yeah. basically what I'm trying to say is that you need to become somebody else. If you're the same person who started on trying to eat healthy, you will go back to your behavior. Yeah. But if you realize that by doing this with food, you start changing your relationship with, with your friends, with your partner, with your boss, things become completely different, so different, that you're just not the same person. You're changing relationship with food first, but then you change relationship with yourself and with people around you. So it's yes. completely new thing. And it becomes a habit that you have for everything else in your life. And it, mm. it's, it's really hard only at the beginning. Mm. And after that, you become lighter. You become more in connect with yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. It sounds great work that you're doing, Mariana. Really, really great work. And um, so tell us, tell us if you wouldn't mind a little bit more about keto, because I don't think that many people know about it. Um, it's obviously becoming more fashionable. A lot of the celebrities I hear, I've heard people say it's very regimental. Uh, people can get very obsessed with it um so yeah share your view on it yeah well you know first to say what the keto is uh, you see you can run your body your energy from burning sugar glucose or burning ketones in order for your body to make ketones your body needs fat right when you're young and healthy your body goes from one to another it switches you, your first body would always go to sugar first. Yeah. When there is no more sugar, body goes to fat and uses fat. And that's normal and natural. Right. In our society where we eat so much carbs mm. and your body keeps getting more and more and more carbs, at some point we start having something called insulin resistance where when your body is actually because insulin is not working well and it's a very important hormone and signals the body store fat. 
you keep storing fat and storing fat and not using it. And then no matter what you do, you can't lose weight. Yeah. Keto diet is about helping your body to restore that so that your body could start using fat for fuel right. again. There are a lot of people who are very strict, who think about keto as the best option in the world and you should blah, yeah. blah, blah, do that. I don't think so. Uh, my, my motto is there is no one size fits all, number one. Number two, I like to use keto as a restart button on computer, right? Yes. You tried to lose weight and it didn't work. Otherwise, you wouldn't come to me. Okay? Yes. Or you wouldn't think about keto. You're using keto because something is not working, right? Yeah. And first people think about that as, okay, they've heard that if you can eat uh, bacon and eggs and drink uh, bulletproof coffee and that's it. <laughs> I would never advise that because that's not healthy. Uh, my way, and that's why I called it green, because without greens, I wouldn't, you know, it, it's not healthy, right? So yes. my way is about having those green sweet, using keto, if you need it. It doesn't mean that everybody needs it, but I like to use keto as a month or two option in order to restore hormones, to make your insulin start working again, and teaching your body to use fat as a fuel, right. and then you start going in and out of ketosis, depending on how that would work for you. So how that would be for you and for me would be a completely different story. Sure. And for me, it's the first thing is basic. You, you use keto to restore. Actually, you first stop eating sugar. Some people, when they start stop eating sugar, they don't need to eat uh, in keto, like really keto, because Keto diet means going about 10% carbs, about 20% protein, and 70% fat. Yeah. So that's the keto diet. Mm. But it's very important to understand that some people, in order to start losing weight, they have to be very, very low keto, you know, really strict and yes. eating a lot of fat. Other people could be in the middle. It depends where your body is. So mm. personalized nutrition is part of what I really, really practice and recommend mm. uh, because we need to start where you are. So not keto diet would be, you know, very strict. You do this and, and there are so many things that are not allowed. And yeah. then, honestly, I work with a lot of people who tried keto and they couldn't carry on because it's too much. And usually Understood. two problems arrive. One, they miss desserts and they miss bread. Yes. I'm sharing in my group, Facebook group that I'm running, a lot of recipes and there are foods that people usually miss, like desserts and breads and bread rolls and stuff that are keto. Yes. So you still eat them and then you don't feel, oh, poor me, you know, I didn't do that. And no. there is a lot of vegetables. But the main point is being keto for life, I don't think it's healthy, and especially not for women. Mm. Definitely not. But then you find the balance. For example, let's say on average, once when you achieve what you want, you see that your hormones are working better because with keto diet, your energy goes up, you sleep better, you become calmer. So there are a lot of things that signs, let me put it this way, because when I work with somebody, I give them ideas, they come back to me and tell me how they feel. And if you feel yeah. fine, we are doing well. If you're not, we need to adjust. Okay, yes. I hope that makes sense. And then I see when the time is to kind of introduce carb days, like some people call it um, carb cycling, or there are many different names. But the point is, you have days when you add more carbs, because there are so many uh, healthy foods that have more carbs than keto diet would allow, like beetroot, mm. apple, pear, you know, th those are healthy foods. Yes. But on keto, you don't eat that. No. And obviously there is so much good stuff in it that I can't tell you don't eat it and I don't think it's good. So basically, mm. then you have days when you're adding more and we explore how you feel after that. What's your level? What is your level? to feel good with introducing yeah. those. 
And then you might say, you know, for you, it would be good to be in ketosis only twice, two days a week. But yeah. it's good that you have those days because if you don't, and if you go to eating more carbs, it's not good for you, honestly. And it's really important to understand that the way we eat today, especially developed countries, yes, full of carbs, it's so much. And yeah. unfortunately, I have to say that I work with quite a few vegetarians that are having a problem because vegetarian diet is about quite a lot of carbs. Yeah. And I've been there and I couldn't survive. I mm. wanted to stop eating meat. That was my idea. And I couldn't go for long because my energy went really low. And I've got Hoshimoto, which is thyroid um, autoimmune disease. Right. And... I had to start eating meat again. Yeah. So my point is, as I said before, one size fits all never works. For example, mm. right now, this week, I'm vegan. And mm. my body likes it for a while. And then I introduce some, some stuff, like I don't eat dairy, sugar, or gluten ever. Uh, but that's because my body is like that. Mm. But what I'm trying to say is definitely each body likes to have a little bit of resting from eating and digesting stuff like meat. Yeah. But then you need to find your own way. Where is your energy level? What's your um, brain capacity? What, what's going on in order for you to know what's your, your way? So yes. again, going to personalize stuff. Maybe too much information I just gave you. But what I'm trying to say, it's not no. easy. It's not hard. You know, I think I think th there's a lot of I don't know if you follow what's going on in the tech industry in California. Um, I don't know that much about it. The only thing I do know about it, there's a lot of let's call it bio hacking that is being developed. And the bio hacking refers to how can we get more out of this useless piece of body that we've got to make it go for longer than at the moment it can go and there's a lot of under the radar a little bit but i think it's going to be coming up over the next couple of years more and more particularly because of covid and trying to make this organism more resistant to pathogens that might come to us in the future. And so what, what you're describing, which is this personalized um, health routine, making it very specific for that person's organism, <laughs> including their mind, is very much the way that things will be going into the future um i hope so yeah i, you, you I know so that i know so that is working you know 24 7 for you yeah and I'm thinking oh i would like to look slimmer that's right that's right <laughs> craving it's back to craving yeah and really really fascinating so I, a couple of questions came up in my head if if you don't mind about keto and fat um, what is in that food group when you say fat, 70% fat, what are some of the things let's say, cause I don't eat, I only eat fish now and again. So for example, um, I don't want to eat fish at the moment. I've kind of gone, Oh, I don't want to eat any more fish for a while. I have this sometimes like I go, Oh no, no more fish. I don't want it. Um, I don't eat meat at all. Have, I haven't been eating meat for 16 years. Um, so well, when, when I, yeah, meat kind of animal meat, um, I'm not vegan, so I do eat eggs, but not a huge amount. Um, so yeah, well, I'm interested in the fat portion. Yeah. You see, there is healthy and unhealthy fat. And yeah. people are afraid of fat simply because, you know, that's the campaign that started 50 years ago. And yes. 
I don't want to go into that story, but let's no. say it's wrong, and we have all the science behind it today, that fat That's doesn't right. make you fat. On, on the contrary, fat helps you burn fat. That's right. the important difference. And I work with people who are vegetarian, so it's possible. And we are talking about non-refined olive oil, for right. example, that you can use in salads. Rather than putting a tiny amount, you go generously. Yeah. All the nuts and seeds. Yes. Olives, avocado, and just using what I've just said, it's a lot. And when yes. I'm saying 70%, people imagine the plate with 70% fat. Yes. But we are talking about <laughs> calories. And yeah. fat, food uh, that is full of fat, it's really dense. And it's not a lot. Like, for no. example, you can eat your salad and take a handful of nuts. That's it. Yeah. And put, let's say, put olive oil on your salad generously and yeah. having a handful of nuts and seeds, that's 70%. And if you eat eggs, you have more. So yes. you see what I'm trying to say? Or nut butter that is more concentrated. Yes. So it's not as it seems because you have five times more calories in fat food than in carbs. Yes. So it's not a lot in, in terms of how much do you see on your plate. Think it's a calories. So yeah, so, like so when you, because I've been through this too, uh, you know, calorie counting, I've done that and it really worked for me last year. It really worked. I lost weight doing calorie counting. But of course, when you eat fat products, the calories go really high. Let, and let then me. you kind of, and then you kind of go, oh gosh, I've gone over. I don't want my clients to count calories. It's not about that. I mentioned calories uh, because that's important to understand the difference between carb, fat, and protein. It's a different right. content of calories. Calories are something for generally for the lab how it burns, right? Yes. But it's more, I want people for about a month to use Carb Manager, for example, which is a really good app where you see the difference. And once when you learn what's the ratio, you don't need it. And I don't want you to count calories. I want you to know the percentage of calories that you're taking, how much is fat, how much is carb, and what's the protein, right? Right. Just for ratio, I'm looking into ratio. Right. not the amount of uh, calories because when you start eating food that has more fat you are less and less and less hungry right For example i can't stay in ketosis because i'm too slim i couldn't believe that i would ever say that <laughs> <laughs> congratulations yeah if i'm if i would be in ketosis all the time i would keep losing weight and I don't want to lose any weight. I actually, I would like to put a little bit more, like four or five pounds. I would like to have more. Mm. Um, but it's kind of like, really, there is a lot of things, details that you need, you need to learn. But something that I didn't mention at the beginning, it's a big part of my work, and that is small steps. Mm. If you try to do a huge change very quickly, your brain doesn't like it because brain doesn't like change at all. So it's going to make you feel and do things differently just to stop. So you need yeah. to trick your brain that you're doing very small steps. See, it, it's easy and you feel better. And then the brain is just kind, kind of, and body is going to be on your side. So you really need to go slow, right? Yes. And the second reason for that is stress. Because if I bring your stress up, there is no, it's just everything that you do well are going to be eaten by stress. Yes. So small steps are the key to make people understand that you're not looking for fast results. You're looking for long-term results. Yeah. And I love that. I love, what did you just say about the stress? If you're eating, result, yeah. you're eating stress. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, right that's the the subtitle for this podcast eating stress <laughs> oh i love it oh 
Mariana, I, I could talk to you for hours on this topic. It's it's really, really fascinating. So tell us a little bit about where can people find out more? Can you share your website, your Facebook page, wherever? How can they get in touch with you? Okay. Yes. Well, my, my website is www.greenmindfulketo, as one word, dot com. Uh, you can email me on greenmindfulketo at gmail.com. Um, my Facebook page is Green Mindful Keto. And I also have a Facebook group that is called Keto for Busy People Over 40, where I'm sharing recipes, ideas, tips, you know, yeah things like that and uh, i'm planning i'm working on an online program as well yes uh, which is kind of challenging because as i said it's personalized work but yes i will put something together which is going to be four five week program where in general the idea is to help people to take them off sugar yeah because for some people that's enough mm. And if they need to work more, you know, we can then continue. And I want to make it affordable. And, yes. you know, my basic program, if anybody who is listening is interested, is called Life is Sweeter Without Sugar. It's a five-week program. Yes. And it's only 200 pounds for five weeks. So, you know, it's not a big investment. I really wanted that to be affordable because I think it's a big thing. When you stop eating sugar, how your brain likes it is just so nice. How suddenly, you know, I've seen people who were really, really like foggy brain, you know, go into the room and thinking, am I going or, or you know, <laughs> what's going on with me while I'm here? Those yes. kind of things disappear. Yeah. And I'm really, really, you know, passionate and I want to make this more available for people so they could understand and make it easy and not to see how much people struggle about it. Mm, mm. Sounds wonderful. Okay, well, hopefully you'll get lots of people coming out of the woodwork <laughs> for for your program. Mariana, is, is there something that I should have asked you that I didn't, that you wanted to share with the listeners? I don't know, maybe I talk too much. <laughs> No, definitely not. No, it was very informative. You you seem to, well, not seem to, you definitely know a lot about your topic and your subject. And yeah, it's it's so fascinating. You know, we met online, didn't we, in a networking event. Yeah. And when I heard you speak about what you do, I, I recognized you're you're very special in the way that you approach it so well done to you uh, it's been really fascinating speaking to you and we'll definitely keep in touch and thank you for coming on the podcast thank you very much michael i was really happy to to be here thank you for an opportunity to share my experience and my my own story with people with your audience well it's been wonderful Take care. Bye for now. Bye. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please rate, subscribe and share at will. I'm always looking for more listeners and guests. So do get in touch, please. You can find me pretty easily by searching for Staying Alive UK. Thank you. Staying Alive UK. Share your story.